Okay, lean in, lots of smiles. <laughs> We're gonna talk about one of my favorite like subsections of knives. I love different types of boning knives. I really enjoy butchery. Why do you want a boning knife? Because you can actually debone all sorts of different bits of meat and it will change how much you cook and you can save money. They're awesome. All right, a little bit about boning knives. Now, a boning knife is designed to uh, take bones out of animals. Why do you need one? Because you're gonna take bones out of animals and uh, then eat the meat. Other than stating the obvious, there's many different kinds. Over here, I would say these guys are the shape that you find in a most standard Western style boning knife. You got a little spot for your finger to go and stay safe. You got a little bump here where you can ride along the bones. They're a little bit longer. They're kind of narrow skinny, which is good for going around the curves. Uh, we've got this awesome guy here from Silverthorn. We're about to start selling them, to be honest with you. And it's like using a needle. It's got a really great curve to it. Awesome for taking skin off of stuff. Now we've got this Honosuke here, this real fat triangular shaped blade, and that's a little bit more unique. It's designed for poultry and, you know, it works really well on small game as well, and it is good for some other general butchery purposes. Now, something like this guy here, the Honosuke Maru, that's really quite straight, has no sort of bolster, is good in a lot of situations. I like it for cleaning sinew off of meat. It's great for taking bones out. And it's also good in sort of a reverse grip where you can uh, work on something that's hanging because when we're doing butchery, there's a couple different ways of going about it. I mean, in fact, some people will take a whole animal. Say you're a hunter, say you have a farm, say you buy whole pigs from somebody. You'll want a big sturdy knife. In fact, you'll likely end up with a couple for doing that job. A lot of us will just buy what are called primals. So a big pork shoulder or a full beef rib. And those you can scale take down and, and cut into smaller pieces. This guy is a Garasuki and it gets more into some specific purposes, really good for doing large birds or if you're working with a lot, like say it's all day long, you're cutting chicken, it's a fantastic knife, but it can also be used in the place of a Deba or a Japanese fish filleting knife. So you can get many different uses out of these while they all tend to be better for specific things. Today we're gonna do three different tests. We're gonna take a couple of these knives and we're gonna cut some real standard things. One, a pork shoulder, two, a chicken. I'm gonna compare these knives side by side so you can see how they act and work differently. And then we, you can hopefully choose one that'll be best for you. All right, first test, really simple. I'm gonna cut the breast off of this chicken carcass. I gotta watch out down here. I got uh, the wishbone to cut around. I'm gonna guide myself down this keel bone here, but I have to try to make a curve that goes around the uh, carcass. So, let's see how we do here. It's pretty smooth. It's nice and rigid, so you have nice control over the knife. It is super sharp. Uh, it snags a bit as it bumps into the bone. So I ride down the wishbone there to the shoulder. Okay, make sure I leave the tender in. Just keep following around. This tip that drops down is really nice. It, it's given me really fine control of where I'm cutting. This is a cut that I should have done before I started, but I'll do it now anyway. So I'm just gonna take the breast off here and I'm actually gonna, you know, I'm gonna try and take the wing off with it. It's easier to take it off and leave the wing on the carcass. So let's try the hard way. Now this is a thing where I like, see how tall and, and fat the blade is right here. So I can drive it through something like this. A lot of control. Where's my shoulder? There we go. Wow, well, that went pretty smoothly. Let me just uh, do the classic old French cooking school move and we'll French the bone. It's actually something no one ever really needs to do unless you're in cooking school. Again, the Honosuke with that tall, stiff, and you know, really thick spine there really gives you a nice kind of I guess power to push on the knife as you're going between a joint like that. Looks good, it was pretty clean. I managed to get pretty clean here, so nice and close to the bone. Uh, it's a little wider, so you've got a bit of a margin. Um, so I didn't feel like I was snagging too badly on the, on the bones, which sometimes it feels like the knife is getting driven into the bones. 
so now let's take the leg off. Uh, so test number two, let's take the leg off. So I'm gonna cut underneath, find my joint. You can see where your, your thigh bone runs based off of this line of fat. It runs straight underneath there. So I'm gonna go right up against the knuckle. Again, this tip, how it drops down like that is really awesome. It's really sharp. And so there we open up the joint, get in here. It doesn't go around the curves as, as well at the back here because it's so tall and I suspect the skinnier boning knives will do that better, but there's just a bit of mass to this knife that gives you a lot of power. All right, test one, test two. We've got a breast, now we've got a leg, but let's really test out how this knife goes around the curves by taking the bones out of the thigh and the drumstick. So I'm gonna find that, locate that little line of fat right there. This little line of fat goes right between the knuckle of this guy, and then this little line of fat goes right along the line. So I'm gonna cut the two pieces in half first, and I'm just gonna put the heel of the knife right there. Because that is how a Honosuke is designed. You use the heel to go between the joints, and then you reserve the tip to cut the meat and the skin. And what that allows you to do is, is as you're running near around and through bone, is there is always a chance that you're gonna ding up the edge. And, and that's fine, you can always sharpen it so it's got a really blunt angle, which makes it more like a, a big wedge to drive through, but you can also sharpen the front and save that front so you don't end up dinging up that edge. Now we're just gonna take the thigh bone out. I like to just sort of spread it apart and work down both sides until I can go underneath. We go. That was pretty smooth. Pretty nice. Really nice edge on this knife. I, I find that it's not skidding around on the meat at all. All right, so now we'll take this drum stick apart. You know, frankly, it's not a job you need to do. It's better just to cook them whole, but this is a not a how to cook a piece of meat whole video. This is a how to debone video. So I'm just gonna get underneath. This is pretty smooth too. I mean, it's not uh, too difficult. It was a little bit chunky trying to get around uh, and underneath the, the bone there, but uh, not too bad. All right, knife number two. Now this is my knife. I use this knife all the time. This has become the knife that I am the most comfortable doing the butchery uh, the style of butchery that I do, uh, which is take apart chickens and buy primals of beef and cut them into steaks. And, you know, I do a lot of different sort of butchery stuff, but this knife is uh, called the Honosuke Maru, and this is the uh, chicken test. So again, I'm gonna come down on either side of this keel bone. Uh, yeah, this is like just floating through this meat. It's so smooth. Oh yeah, this one first. This steel and this edge has a toothiness to it that just floats through this meat with utter confidence. This is awesome. Wow. Okay, look at that. No, no problems, no problems whatsoever. All right, let's take this wing off here. I'm gonna spin it around. Eh, it's not kinda, it's not going through the knuckle quite as smoothly as the other one did. And, uh, I think it's okay though. I mean, didn't have any troubles, but all right. So now let's take this leg off here, get in here. Okay, so I'm taking the leg off of this guy, get in here, get that oyster out. It, this knife is pretty nimble. and That's something I really like about it is just trying to get it to go around those little turns and curves is really smooth and easy. As I come around, yeah, this thing just goes around the turns. It's got that same sort of drop tip here that the Honosuke does, and I find that's really nice just because when I lift the knife up, I get that tip just engages with the meat. So I get a really nice little clean cut without stabbing too deeply. And I, that's one of the things you want when you're deboning something is to, you only want to cut enough. You don't want to be going through and stabbing the skin as much, uh, as little as possible. Underneath, back under the knuckle and try to get the big bit of cartilage out. Lots of curving on this one, you can see. And this knife is doing a fantastic job. And that edge is so nice. A lot of control with that guy. 
I felt like I didn't have the same sort of momentum as I did with the Honosuke, that knife that has more steel to it. Just, I was using a little bit more force and every time you start using more force, you, you, if something slips, it can go wrong uh, worse, right? You have more power behind the blade. Uh, but this uh, Honosuke Maru, the Sekatake Yuki is the maker of this guy. This is the SK4 steel and that steel, man, let me tell you, the just like almost like a grip on the meat as the knife went through it was really fantastic. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's my favorite for a reason, I guess, but. All right, I'm super excited to try this. In fact, when I look at my Sakabone, or the Honosuke Maru, I look at it and mine's starting to look like this just from the years of using it and sharpening it. My tip is getting narrower like this and, and this is just leaned into that. This is a Silverthorne knife. It's actually made in the United States out of an O1 tool steel. Uh, which is great, kind of like stainless, not stainless, but like carbon steel. Okay, this thing is like using, it's gonna be like using a needle light. That's my prediction. So come down the sides here. Yeah, you, you definitely need to, to push it a bit more, but it's longer. Oh, it's longer and it is just sliding. Oh, I missed the, wow. All right, all right. Okay, it's a little pokey. It's not got the same sort of toothiness as that Honosuke Maru. And get in through the thing here. Yeah, same, it's, it's light, so I do need to push on it a little bit to get it to do the work. But holy cow, is this thing ever nimble. It's really thin, and it's got a little bit of flex to it. It's not rigid. Sometimes you want that rigid boning knife. I find when you're doing something like taking the whole leg out of a, a ham. You, you really want that rigidness. Sometimes a little bit of flex is okay though, as you can ride along the bone without it digging into the meat behind it. All right, let's take this leg off, see how we're doing here. Spin it around. It's gonna be really great trying to get this oyster out. Oh yeah, look at that. The natural curve on this blade you can use, instead of curving the knife, you. You just sort of slide it and it exaggerates that motion. Okay, pretty great so far. I feel that it's a little light, I mean, but this is a, a pretty nice. So in here, either side, I'm just gonna do the whole leg again. All right, just keep working around the knuckle. Nice, so nimble, it, it's, its length might be a little long for this job as on a chicken, but maybe this length would be better on something bigger. I think this fine skinny little tip, oh yeah, like look at that. So when you're taking the skin off of something or cleaning, cleaning fat or sinew off of something, having this skinny little long blade is gonna be just fantastic. Yeah, okay, does the chicken, does the job, does the job. Wasn't my favorite on the chicken. Um, did a nice job, really nice and thin, really great for going around the curves on the legs. So uh, yeah, there you go. It's pork time. You gotta put your shoulder into it. This is a bone, I'm gonna take this bone out. I'm gonna take some of the meat apart by, you know, seaming it, going through the seams of the meat, and then we're gonna skin this guy. Now, I got the same three knives as I used with the chicken, and we're gonna see how they do. I think this guy, I'm gonna try and do it without cutting through it. I'm gonna do something called tunnel boning where you really do a, like, you dig it out. I, why am I even talking about it? I'm just gonna show you. And this guy, yeah, like you can push this guy up against that bone. Yeah, the flexibility here is actually pretty nice because I can get really close to that bone by just pushing on it and you can see that part of the blade up against the bone. I can move the knife out so I'm not digging into the bone, but I'm just riding along it. And that's really allowing me to cut the least amount off without catching on the bone. That's one of the hard things or the kind of an annoying thing as you're deboning something is that the edge of the knife catches on the bone and it snags and it just doesn't, slows you down, doesn't feel good. See how this Honosuke does getting in here. Yeah, this, this knife is nice and sharp. Again, that sort of drop tip is pretty helpful. It's, it's, it's kind of awkward, I'll be honest, this feeling of trying to get it to go around this corner because, uh, you know, it's not flexible at all, right? And as you can see, as I'm trying to turn, you can see how, if you see as I'm trying to turn, 
the edge is biting right into that bone. And, and that's not what I want. I don't want it for my knife as much as I want to do it for the, the job I'm working on here. So yeah, not the greatest, but let's try this fella here. Now, something that's great about this Honosuke Maru is that you can flip it over and hold it like this, which just seems a little bit more natural as you're moving it. And of course, if the meat was hanging, this works great, this grip for dealing with the hanging carcass. Yeah, okay, let's, let's try this fella for this too. We're getting right down to the end. Oh, Jesus, this thing is so good for this. Because that, that blade is so slender, it just f flies around these little corners. Not mad about that one at all. Okay, that was cool. We got this little bone out. And there's lots of twists and curves in here to get through. So that was a pretty good test, I'll be honest. All right, so let's check, make sure we got everything here. No bits left, so. Okay, let's do some seaming. So I'm gonna take some of these pieces apart by the different muscle. And that's often what you're doing when you're butchering, especially if you're starting with something much bigger, is you find these lines and these seams and you follow along them and that's where you end up separating it down to the different pieces of meat. Yep, like in this drop tip here. That style's pretty good. Let's see how we do with this guy. Yeah, it's just a little harder to steer this guy. But nice edge, nice bite. Yeah, I'm a fan of this drop tip we got going on. It's like a little adventure, you know? All right, all right. Now let's try this guy for some of this stuff here. A little resistance against that bit of sinew there. But let's kind of go underneath. Oh, I can see I'm gonna take that piece of sinew off and this knife is gonna just win the day. So I'm just turning it into little nuggets. It might not be what you wanna do. That's the sinew that's in here is not so bad that you need to cut it out. But you know, in a pork shoulder, you can do all sorts of kinds, all sorts of stuff with the meat from a pork shoulder. You can skewer it, you can braise it, you can roast it, you can, uh, you can barbecue it, of course, nice and long and slow. You want to do it long and slow if you want to break down that connective tissue or the sinew in the middle, but if you want to take it all apart and skewer it, you're going to want to cut that sinew off because it's not going to cook out at the time you want. But yeah, this is pretty fun, actually, this little guy, the silver thorn. It's like really smooth. And it's just so nice for, for getting around these bits. See that pokey ability. So this is, this is silver skin here, and this is something you find on a lot of stuff, whether it's a pork tenderloin, or a, you know, a beef tenderloin, or a strip loin, any of that kind of stuff. Often you find you wanna just cut some of that stuff off. That's really nice. Look, left most of the meat on there, so really, really quite a good cut off that one. So uh, let's try it on this side using this Honosuke Maru. Yeah, there's just more blade to it, so it's a little bit, there's a little bit more resistance as I'm trying to poke it through. As well, that drop tip doesn't quite, um, doesn't quite want to f float through underneath the sinew as well as that uh, silver thorn. Let's try this with the Honosuke. Honosuke, I think, is gonna be very similar. The tips are pretty similar, although it's a little bit wider. And push it through. Yeah, it's the same kind of resistance of feeling it also gets wide really quickly. So if you're trying to take out a bit of sinew without cutting another piece of meat around it, you're gonna have to like manipulate the stuff you're working on to get the meat out of the way where that skinny little knife, you wouldn't have to worry about it so much. You just change the angle you're holding it at. But yeah, nice, nice edge, nice steel on this guy. So uh, yeah, okay. now. You could do it from this side with the skin up, but you see it's got more curve. So I want to be close to the skin. So I'm going to put the skin flat down on the surface. So then it's going to be easier for me to get out. I'm going to go into the middle and out the side. So we'll do it with this little fella here. I'm not going to cut through the skin, but yeah. All right. Yeah, this is where that flexibleness really kind of wins because as you push down on one side, the other side doesn't have the same sort of pressure and can just glide right along. Look at that, that's a beautiful little, little nuggy. Now I'm gonna try it with this Honosuke because that width will, dry, will guide it really straight. And the spine of this blades particularly, you see that Honosuke on my left here, that's definitely the thickest blade. So 
that's gonna, I'm gonna push down on the spine here as I slide the knife under the meat. Yeah, it's not. It's just sticking, there's just more surface area. I mean, as you can see, it's getting the job done relatively easily. Uh, it's just not quite as nice. Like you can see how that silver thorn knife, right? Nice and smooth. This one, you know, it wasn't quite long enough. I felt like the handle started bumping up against the edge of the cutting board, kind of getting in the way sort of. Uh, so maybe this lateral kind of cutting skinning motion. Uh, this is, I think, where the Honosuke is kind of falling down the most. The uh, Honosuke Maru, I mean, is not bad for that either, especially since the way the knife is ground. It's kind of a, a right-handed bias where the edge is mostly done on the one right-hand side and not so much on the left side. In fact, the left side of this blade is flat where the right side has got a bit of a curve to it. And that, see how that just like slides the fat up and off? Like that's pretty nice. All right, let's do that again with this guy. See if we can get another thin layer. This knife is so thin that I just feel like that leads towards getting Yeah. All right, this guy wins here for the the sort of that lateral or s slicing skinning kind of movement. That was really awesome. It was also really good for that tunnel boning and going around the curves. You know, frankly, it did a pretty good job with that chicken, but when it came to separating the bones, it wasn't quite as as robust feeling. So, you know, unsurprisingly, um, the knife designed for taking apart chicken really excelled at taking apart chicken. Uh, the, the weight of it, the width of it, the height at the heel, the ability to use the front to go around the curves and then the heel to go through the joints. I really liked it. it was, I felt really confident doing it and I had really good control over the blade. Uh, now, when it came to some of the other jobs like that tunnel boning, you know, I managed to make it work but it wasn't ideal and I think you'd snag the edge a fair bit on the bone. With the hard Japanese steel, you're gonna wanna stay away from snagging the edge of the knife on a bone, because especially if you're doing a rotating motion, if you get that edge tucked into a piece of bone and twist it, you might chip it. So, great on the chicken, not so hot on the pork, okay on the skinning and the, and the uh, seaming or taking the muscle groups apart. Now, this little fella from Silverthorn was excellent at the tunnel boning. It was going around the curves incredibly well. It was pretty smooth. Uh, at some points I felt like maybe on the chicken it would the the blade was a little long, but uh, I, I, I hard to complain about that, to be honest. And when I was doing the chicken and going through the joints and the legs and stuff, it was a little small and a little bit lightweight for that. So uh, a winner when it came to taking the skin off of things and for doing those tight little curves, which, I mean, makes sense. Having that thin little knife, it's gonna go around curves well. And, if you think about why a nakiri is so great, it's tall and straight. And when you're cutting through big, tall things, you can cut straight. It's not gonna move around. So really, the Silverthorn knife, what an incredibly nimble blade. Uh, and then right here in the middle, the Honosuke Maru from Sakai Takeyuki. I think this is a great knife. I have a knife just like this. I use it a lot. And great steel. I, I felt like it was really great for most of the jobs I was just doing. and. You know, maybe when it was doing that tunnel boning, it wasn't quite as good as that little needle there, but it seemed to perform quite well. What I, I did really like on, uh, especially on the chicken, but also in taking apart the bits of meat on that pork shoulder was this kind of dropped tip here, where that tip is aimed down, and that gave me a really good bite on what I was trying to cut through without getting very deep, uh, deep cuts. Uh, not going through too too much past what I was trying to cut. However, when it got into getting in and taking the skin off or the, the little bits of fat off, it, it did seem to slow the knife down a little bit. I felt like there was a bit more resistance. Whereas this fella with this tiny little tip was really able to just slide right in underneath stuff. So I, I think for those general purposes of what we did, say, say you swapped out that pork shoulder for something like a beef sirloin, uh, you'd be able to, to comparatively use these knives for those jobs. If you've got a really specific task, get a really specific knife. You'll enjoy yourself more, right? You're, you're gonna do it more often. And, and that's kind of what matters. I mean, you can get all three, you can get one and learn how to do it. If, if you're a big fan of cutting up whole chickens, 
Get the Hanasuki, it'll work just fine on a piece of beef or a piece of pork. If, if you're hunting and you are butchering stuff a lot, uh, maybe something where you can deal with the hanging carcass is gonna work for you. You might even want a few different knives. And if you're just into barbecue, maybe you're just trying to take those little bits of bone out as you're uh, carving, this skinny little fella would be a fantastic choice for you. Built for chicken, not so good for the skinning or the tunnel boning. This thing built for the tunnel boning, not bad at taking apart the chicken. Fine little tip, skinny little blade, great around curves. Right here, smack dab in the middle, this fella, great for going around curves, maybe not the best. Pretty good at taking apart a chicken, maybe not the best. I think this you can use for pretty much any piece of meat you're gonna buy at Costco. You can get one and make it work for everything. You can buy them all and have a collection. It's completely up to you. Enjoy using them. That's what you're getting them for. Hey, this is Mike here from the future. I wanna let you know, we finally got the silver flown boning knives back in. BD1 steel, tough, sharp. It has this awesome custom handle for us. It's black and red, knife wear colors, made out of G10, super durable material. Uh, it's a super great boning knife, but you'll love it. They're a $295 Canadian right now. They're in stock in both stores and the website. Tell us what knife shapes you want us to compare next. Put it in the comments, we'll pull it off.